And I'd like to welcome to town Helmut Rogue, who I just met today, a new resident on Curious. County Road. Yeah, we're doing the Okay, so I'd like to open the meeting hearing. It's actually a hearing that we're going to open with first. And it's a public hearing and informational meeting on the ARPA, American Rescue Plan, town funds. Um, I can give you a brief synopsis on what's happened to the money. There's still some money left. Some money's been spent. 470000 has been committed out of the 762, 740000 that we received as ARPA money. So we've spent, we've committed 470302 and 416 has been expended. So the remaining funds have to be committed by December 31st. We have some thoughts on what to do with the rest of the money, but we wanted to hear from the public also um, and any ideas, thoughts that they had and in additional to the select board thoughts. So that's the gist of the hearing. Um, the next thing is, are there any additions to the agenda for this hearing? I don't see any. Yes. Yes, there are. For the hearing. Oh, for the hearing, sorry. Yes. No. No, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> and there is public comment, but of course this is public hearing anyway, so not sure if maybe that's redundant. Uh, but anyway, the floor is now open on the hearing. I see a bunch of people here and faces on the Zoom. Who would like to start? Uh, this is Deb Pillian. Uh, I don't Pillian. know if you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I was going to make a presentation on behalf of the listers, if you want to start there, or if somebody, I don't know how many people are in the room there. If somebody else has their hand up, I can't see. Nobody has their hand up, so you can go ahead. Okay. Um, this, this afternoon, the listeners were looking at the uh, ARPA expenditures to date, and we realized that last December, when we gave you our annual report, we made a couple of proposals or mentioned a couple of things that would fit into existing categories here so we could ask for ARPA money instead of having asked for 2024 budget money. Um, if you remember, we asked, it, we asked for a file cabinet be budgeted for 2024 because our oldest file cabinet isn't fireproof like the other three that we have. And uh, we could use it for files we have now currently, but also for those that we're going to be generating for the townwide reappraisal. And we just thought that file cabinet could fall under ARPA under office furniture, since you have that as a line already. And then the next line that you had was digitization of land records. The um, it appears that the land records have all been recorded in terms of the deeds. I mean, have been digitized, they've been scanned in, the deeds all the way back to book one. But the scanning of the surveys stopped last June, June 2022, I mean, 14 months ago. And at the time, we were told that um, the expectation was Denise was going to come back after she retired and she had a replacement doing her normal job. As a special project, she was going to finish scanning the rest of the surveys on that large scanner that we had. And, um, you know, that transition was a little rocky, so it didn't happen when we expected it to. But we were hoping that it's intended that the rest of the surveys will be scanned in. And um, especially the ones that were recorded in the last 14 months, because we're about to embark on maintaining the tax maps and doing all the updates for 2023. So having scans of those maps instead of having to wrestle those big mylars on the copier machine and then tape together the four or five, you know, pieces of paper that we have to use to, you know, we, we have to make multiple parts of the map in order to get it on the copy machine at the same time, you know, we can't fit it all at one time. So it's kind of a crazy tape together patchwork kind of deal. And it's so much nicer when they were just, you know, scanned in and we could just pick up the scan. It looks like about three dozen of them were scanned and it stopped with the last one was the map that record got recorded uh, June 15th, 2022, and then nothing that got recorded after that. But there's a whole bunch before that as well that could be recorded. I think there's probably more than 400 maps that have not yet been scanned. Um, so if you want to do them all the way back to the beginning, like you did for the deeds, that would be a project. But at the very least, it would be great to have the ones more recent so we can do our tax map maintenance more conveniently. 
And um, there was one other category, which was, hold on. Oh, purchase uh, employee laptops. We didn't mention this last December, but we used to have three workstations and it wasn't that often, but there was one day a week that the three listers were in the office at the same time. And we used to use three computers when we had three available. And we thought if we had a third in the form of a laptop, it would help us on those occasions when all three of us were in the office at the same time. But we could also use it remotely, both from home possibly, and also in the field when we do site inspections. We do that you know, on an annual basis for new construction. And when we embark on this townwide reappraisal, it's something we could bring into the field with us. I worked on the 2024 mass reappraisal. And at that time we didn't have digital sketches or cost sheets. So we did everything on paper in the field and we brought it back to the office and did the input. But now we could take a laptop with us. We've already got a sketch that was done at the last visit and we could conceivably you know, update things in the field or take notes right into the program. So we thought it might be nice to have a laptop for that purpose as well. So anyway, those are the three things, furniture, computer and land records are three existing expenditures that you had or categories for expenditure. And we thought some of the things that were on our wish list could fall into those ARPA fundings instead of regular select board budget. Okay. I think that's it. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. The next. Anybody else? I thought oh. Jenny had some input. Jenny? I have to put you on the spot, Jenny. <laughs> hey, is she on mute? Hey. You muted. Okay. okay. You unmuted yourself and then you muted yourself again. <laughs> you are currently yes, muted. muted. <laughs> Still muted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, you know, I just thought of a few things that could possibly, I know that it makes sense to use this money for town expenditures and then have it available for other things, kind of use it, but have it set aside because we've used some of it for general funds for other things. And um, I wondered if we should think about opening it up to some of the town nonprofits in our community for a possible, a certain portion of it for some grant programming, such as the Senior Center, Four Corners Schoolhouse, Coburn Pond, where their flood victims might be interested in applying, East Montpelier Trails, the Rec Committee, um, whether or not we should think about doing something like that. Should we think about a gazebo for the La Pearl Farm? I mean, there's a lot of creative things we can do. At the same time, I know there's a lot of needs because of flooding and roads, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe a small amount of money could be set aside for some more creative things. I look at towns like Callis and Middlesex that are doing a lot of nice community projects. And I think we're falling behind. So that's my feedback. Okay. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny. Um, yeah. We're taking note. We're taking note. <laughs> Um, um, so, so, who's the next? Oh, Ed Deegan. Oh, Ed Deegan. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, I'm sort of here on the capital budget committee representation aspect of things a little bit. A little bit. Um, um, I think this money was originally developed, developed by the feds for yeah. capital projects, right. not operational not projects. Operational. So every time you make every a decision, I always say, look at what's operational, operational. look at what's capital. capital. Um, um, the, the thing that's been on our list for the capital for budget, budget for many years has been the town garage. garage. I know that you're considering know. putting some of this money into it, and some of it's already been committed to the relevant. Mm -hmm. And from a town resident town standpoint, standpoint, as a taxpayer, not as a capital budget, budget, I think that's probably a really good use of the money, is putting it into that. You know, one of the things with the capital budget is to sustain, you know, our tax rates so that they don't go up too much. You've got a couple of big projects that's being one of them. And we keep putting it off, I think, because we, we, we always look at the bonding on everything else and like, well, when, when this one goes away, we, we, we do the next project. But I don't know how feasible that is. And in this case, when you get got a huge chunk of money up front like this, it's a big incentive to push through and, and uh, 
and motor vehicle because that project's that been, project's on, been on, on under study under for, study for I don't know how long I've been on the committee to look it up, but it's probably at least probably 10, years. At least 10 years. So we're, we've been looking we've at that 10 years ago, years ago, and there's OSHA yeah, violations OSHA and stuff OSHA like that that have that been noted. And yeah. I, you know, I know a little bit of the history behind it. Uh, so I know that's so a consideration. I know, I know you put some of it already some to it, and, and, and from the capital budget capital side budget. of it for the town, uh, I think that that's where I, as a taxpayer and as a representative of the committee, I think that's a really good use of the money. Um, so, not that anything else is off the table. I'm just saying that you know. Yeah. Uh, but but some of the you know some of the you know I don't know if the scanning of the scanning of the maps I would think is an operational thing that should have been done regardless of this money. You know that's a. Uh, something that was in the works and, and you know I know it's been a number of years we've been putting money into that for a number of years for the years. Uh, so you know continue continue all for continuing but that's almost a little bit more operational than it is capital yeah well we're not really we're not judging on, on the various ideas people have tonight we just yeah. want to gather as yeah. many thoughts as we could just so being as open and transparent as possible as possible to give people, people the opportunity to say something, to say something about this and then at, at a point pretty soon we'll take all those ideas, put them together and decide where the money will get funneled. Yeah. But right now we just wanted to reach out to everybody and that's the purpose of the hearing is to find out, you know, hey, what do you think? Hey, what do you think? You know, it's sort of our democratic. Yeah, we did, you did set up the committee that no one was. This, yeah, no one. This is the end of the, uh, the committee of two weeks. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. But I did put it in the front page for her, and yeah. I did get yeah, some did response. Get, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I did reach out to all the respondees. They can send me stuff. I emailed yeah. and told yeah. them about this. So. Well, the, the response has certainly been relatively lackluster. And that's okay. I mean, we just wanted to just put it out there. there. Yeah, it's also complicated. It's also complicated. And yes, you've got you've got, you've got problems. You have, this is time time is of the essence with this money. Yep. you have yep. to deal with it, and then yeah. uh, yeah. and projects projects are not you know not driven like that a, a lot. So, and there's also and there's also what you can do. So you got to be careful. But you but you've given everyone an opportunity to win. That's what we're doing. That's what yeah. we're doing. Yeah. 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 So, so anyway, I, I appreciate that aspect of it. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think we have a lot of yeah. uh, a lot of committee lot work that, that really gives a lot of good input. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, well, thank you. So, 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 do we have anybody else here, here that wants to that wants to comment on comment? ARPA our funds or use of ARPA funds? Of ARPA funds? Sure, I would comment. This is Renee. Yep. Um. I'm sorry I'm late to the meeting. I only heard the tail end of what Ed had to say. Um, I think the first thing I want to say is uh, my thoughts were, you know, like I'm not sure all of the constraints that the federal government has on the ARPA money for towns. It was my understanding that it's supposed to help towns with, you know, like post pandemic type of things. And given some of your neighbors who whose property has been very badly flooded i don't know and observing what fema will and won't cover and what their cap is in relation to <laughs> the cost of the damage which people are still digging out from <laughs> i feel like um that should also be on the table one of the ways um, that could be on the table is um, for ARPA money to offer the 20% match amount for the Vermont Home Improvement Program, which is not necessarily flood related. It's related to affordable housing and helping people get either vacant units or dilapidated units repaired and up for housing. So there are more units of housing. And what I understand from the Vermont Home Improvement Program is that it requires the property owner to have a 20% match. And 
I know there are people that would benefit greatly from that program and have no way of coming up with that 20% match multiplied by whether or not they had damage from flooding. So that was what I came to this meeting to share, and I'd be glad to do more research on it if the select board would like that. But the other thing, having heard what Ed Deegan said at the, the end of what he was saying with regard to committee work, I reached out to Ed the, like within a day or two of seeing the select board's request. And the only thing I got back in return was, I'll get back with you. So if that committee actually met and discussed, then I was excluded. We did so I just, I just want that to be on the record. I don't know. I assumed that the committee hadn't met because I hadn't heard back until I got notification of this meeting and this hearing. And here I am. So I think there was not enough. Yeah, yeah, there was no, we, we did not meet Renee. There was no really committee. Jenny and I took, went back and forth a little bit, uh, short time frame, and we did not have enough output of, of committed interest um, to put a committee together. That's why we're doing this today. That's why this okay. hearing. Well, that was, that was what I thought. No, no, you, you weren't excluded. That's why I made a, a point of listing the people when they called, and I reached out to all, all, all three or four. I don't know if it was three or four. <laughs> whoever, whoever reached out to you, if you and Ginny were going back and forth, then the correct protocol would have been to cross copy everyone who reached out to you, even if you felt like you didn't have a committee process. Oh, we didn't we didn't reached go back out and forth to you. That much. <laughs> What's that? We didn't go back and forth that much. No. I'm just saying, inclusiveness is a really important part of democracy. And if there was supposed to be a committee and three or four of us reached out, why not cross copy everyone every time you have an email? I mean, we don't need to debate it. I'm just saying for the record, for the future, if there is, you know, supposed to be a public committee process, then you include everybody who has said I'm interested. We're, we're not debating it because I agree with you. That's what I just said to Seth and everybody here, which is that the, right. the committee, the, 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 the select board is trying to do things in a really good way by reaching out and doing it. They made the attempt. Uh, it just didn't happen, and and you you know you know time is of the essence with this money. Well, so there's not a lot of time to do a committee. I'm glad, so I'm here. I mean, you did tell me about the meeting. Here I am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why that, 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 this is this is a committee meeting, basically, how we were trying to set up. Okay. Okay. So, were there any other ideas, Renee, that you had about spending the ARPA money? Because I've written down and we're noting in the minutes about the 20% match for home improvements. But were there any other ideas that you had? Well, the other one is to, you know, to um, ask any of the people who had flood damage. I mean, you could include a grant program to help make up the difference between any FEMA support that people didn't get. I'm probably not saying this correctly. People have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. Some of those people have the wherewithal to dig into their pockets or their family pockets or other resources to get through it. And I happen to know that there are some people who are already stretched thin and can't afford you know, the FEMA loan program for a small business, for example, somebody who owns rental housing that they're not living in has to get a loan from FEMA. And some people just can't manage a loan. There are furnaces that need to be replaced. There are, you know, all of the old late 1700, 1800s basements that are just granite. At this point, 
whenever it rains a, an inch a time, the water's pouring into the basement. It wasn't only the flooding, the flooding just kind of started the channels. So it'd be great to know who in town had flood damage and if that ARPA money can be used to help them to secure their property before the next flood, which might be Wednesday. All right, well, we, we've noted so, that. Those are my um, ideas. And going back to the revolving loan fund committee that met many years ago and the ideas for promoting affordable housing, I'm not sure if anything happened with that, but there's a desperate need for affordable housing. There's a desperate need for senior housing. Okay. So right. Those are my ideas and my thoughts about, I mean, I appreciate that taxpayers want some relief um, and many taxpayers need relief. And we also have some emergency situations that are ongoing and have become more critical. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, Renee. Yeah, thank you. Yep. I'm gonna stay yeah, in the What's that? I just said I'm gonna stay. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna mute. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts that they wanna share in this hearing? So the hearing is scheduled for 6.30 and there's no definite end date. We can end the hearing anytime. There's no one else tuning in and we can start the select board meeting. We can wait to see if more people tune in. What do you think, Carl? Hi. I don't see anybody in the waiting room. Um, I don't think that anybody's gonna come between now and 7.30. You yeah. Can, you You're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I suppose if somebody comes in while we're in our select board meeting and says that they have input uh, right. on the ARPA that we could, you know, in between agenda items, we could uh, right. ask for their input. Yep. Mm -hmm. We have other business, so. Yeah. So I'm curious to whomever on the select board, um, Seth, have you, has the select board discussed the select board's ideas for using the ARPA money? Yep. Yeah. We have a sheet that we've put together with some potential uses. Um, basically, what we're trying to do is just one-time expenses, because obviously you don't want to put uh, expenses that you incur on a daily basis and use ARPA money for those, because that would be foolish. Yes, yeah. that's listed in the agenda. Yeah. Now in the GG to put up, so it's. it's it's on the website. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's on the website, um, but we do have some future capital projects. One is the old schoolhouse, the three, two, four corner schoolhouse. It's trying to remediate some mold, and uh, we did commit some money to that. That's a one time expense. There's also the ash removal um, that's going to cost the town. Roughly another $50,000 or whatever. That's also a one-time expense. And then we've also kicked around some other ideas for the town garage. But we haven't committed because we want to hear from the public. Um, and this is part of that process, reaching out to the public, finding out what they thought. We did commit some money earlier, uh, one-time expenses. It's a broadband enhancement. Yeah, the broadband, the various other, um, some various other items that we had in our budget. And what we did is we took one-time expenses and we put that money towards it because the tax rate was going to go up astronomically this year. So to soften the blow on the taxpayers, we took some things out of our budget that were one-time expenses and used ARPA money for those expenses and kept the tax rate, you know, more reason the increase at a reasonable. Um, jump in the tax rate. So if we hadn't done that, the tax taxes would have gone up significantly more than they did. Uh, so that's one way we've managed the money. It's, it's worth saying for the record, just the, the overview that uh, the total ARPA funds that the town has received are $763,000 and uh, um, minus the ones that we've committed, 
uh, to the various things that you've mentioned, then the remaining funds are just north of two hundred ninety-two thousand dollars. It's. So. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Um, I've yeah, been having yeah. some. Uh, the other thing that's important to note as these ideas are discussed is that funds have to be committed by December 31st of 2024 and spent by December 31st of 2026. It's important to note that what I mean by committed is there needs to be executed contracts. We have to have a contract in place with a very specific contractor vendor. Any change to that contract would nullify that commitment. So the federal government, you can't have a contract with, with Joe Smith and for some reason, Joe Smith can't build what you say you're going to build. And now you contract with Paul Smith. You've lost that money. It's gone. So what you have committed has to be spent in exactly how you'd said that it is committed by December 31st of 2024. So all these ideas, while they're great, they have to be solidified very soon. Um, and funds have to be committed. So the overarching guidance is to try to spend as much as you possibly can by December 31st of 2024 to ensure that those funds are not lost by any issue with a commitment. So is does the town of East Montpelier still have a revolving loan fund? It does, and right now it is on the select board agenda for later. The town is actually out of compliance with that revolving loan fund. And I am proposing, well, I am bringing Downstreet to the select board meeting that's actually next week um, for Downstreet to speak with the select board about assigning those funds to Downstreet for affordable housing. This was something that was discussed in 2022 with the board. It's either that or we have to return the funds to the state. Yeah. So yeah. would the would the funds that you're talking about um, going to Downstreet for affordable housing be targeted for East Montpelier? That was the plan. Again, Downstreet will be coming next week to speak about that. I can't speak to those specifics. That's the point in them coming. That was what was discussed last year. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I remember the discussion, but but that's not part of the discussion that we're trying to flesh out right now. We're talking about ARPA money. So if we can keep the loan revolving loan it's thing to another. So I don't know if you can hear me or not. We can hear you, but the revolving loan fund needs to be a discussion at another meeting. Right. Well, so my meeting. only point in bringing it up now <clears throat> is that if that were to be what the select board decided with regard to ARPA funding, and if after the discussion with Downstreet, you proceeded with the revolving loan fund being administered by Downstreet for affordable housing in East Montpelier, then my question or suggestion would be the possibility that some of the funding from the ARPA funding could be designated to the revolving loan fund that Downstreet will be administering to leverage more affordable housing in town or upgrading to um, the Vermont Housing Improvement Program. So I'm just trying to respond to how the ARPA funding could be dispersed without getting caught up in the individuals who would be applying for it, whether it's through a revolving loan fund or whether it's through um, uh, East Montpelier residents home improvement program. Okay, well, we've taken note of your ideas and we know the direction that you would like for that money to head to. And we'll just put that in the pot with the rest of our ideas and figured out. Great. So thank anyway, you. thank you. Thank you. Um, so the point we were getting to was whether we should close the hearing or not. Mm -hmm. Well, it's seven. What's that? It's seven. It's seven. Yep. One question I have for the select board is what are the next steps as it relates to ARPA? Jenny, for example, mentioned a lot of organizations 
local organizations that could need help. I was sort of hoping organizations would come. That was kind of the point of this hearing to bring some things to this. So I guess where I'm stuck as a town administrator is I'm not sure how do we engage people? That that was kind of the point of this hearing. So I'm not really sure how to how to go next steps. I mean, people need to bring requests to us for us, for the town to be able to act on them. And that was the intent of this hearing. And as we see, we haven't, I, we, no one really attended from, from any organizations. So Jenny, have you spoken with organizations? What I know that there needs? is, yeah, I know that there is interest. I think if there was a grant program and I think we could allot a certain amount of money and announce that um, on front porch forum and in the signpost and say, we're inviting nonprofits to apply for whatever that amount is. Maybe it's $50,000, maybe it's $25,000. I don't know what the amount is. And uh, and just invite them to come in with projects. I That's my proposal is that we do that. And the other idea I had, which Renee also said was whether or not we want to also have a program for flood victims. I would have to look into what stipulations or, or limitations there are as it relates to flood. I'm not sure ARPA was not really designed for that. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of restrictions on federal funds and overlapping of federal funds and covering, mm -hmm. to your point, the, you know, kind of what a copay is or what someone's required to pay. You're, mm -hmm. you're not really allowed to mix a lot of that um, yeah. as it relates so that that becomes pretty sticky. We would need right. to reach out to a VLCT about something like that. Yeah. I guess the question is for the select board. I'm concerned about timing here. Um, December 31st, 2024 is going to be here a lot faster than I think we think. Um, so select board, what is the next step to determine this idea that Jenny has that a portion of these funds, whatever that amount may be, set aside. And and again, it could be a front porch forum post or Jenny and Ed, if that's something you could spearhead, that would certainly be great um, to post that, to have organizations bring requests to the select board. I'm trying to get the ball rolling, if you can't yeah. tell on some of these things, because we keep staying in idea mode. And in August of next year, I'm, this time next year, I'm going to be getting really concerned. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, we're kind of putting the cart before the horse here. We had this hearing to entertain ideas. The next step is to look at the ideas and decide where to go. So, okay. yes, Scott? I, I, I'm uncomfortable with, with setting aside X amount of money if we said $50,000 and I'm going to reiterate what Gina has to say and we get grants totaling 20000 or we say 25,000 and we get grants totaling 75,000 that are all well worth it. It is disappointing that this is where they should be today. The other thing that we can do is just directly call the nonprofits that are in the community. They should call us. And well, if they're not going to call us, then that, yes, Scott? Are you finished? I wasn't trying no, to. No, that's you. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I was going to suggest something analogous to that in yeah. that we have the annual funding request process coming up for town meeting and those organizations that are in the habit of asking us for uh, grants for each year's expenses uh, we could just let them know in the packet that we send out to them that uh, we have put aside x amount of money for special requests over and above what you usually request but remember that it's a one-time request yeah, yeah and gina we, gina heads that up and i'm that. I'm on that committee, and it's too late to really do that. That I I actually sent those emails out today already. Yeah. To all of okay. All of thank Thank you for that information. What comes in rather than okay. Like, yeah. But we'll discuss. Sure. That. Yeah, we can discuss. Okay. Okay. So I think that we should close the hearing because mm -hmm. we've definitely gotten everyone's input that attended this hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. If anyone comes in later, then of course we will try to make some time for them. Yeah. Okay. Um. So. The... <laughs> yeah, thank you, Ed. Uh, thank you for your input. Thank you for everything you all do. Uh, that includes you, Gina. Especially Gina. <laughs> especially Gina. Especially Gina. Especially Gina. Thank right. everybody for their participation yeah. in all yeah, she's work. Well, and she's still yeah. here. I guess I'll be seeing some of you next week, probably. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'm setting it up tomorrow. 
Okay, so um, we're going to close the hearing. It's closed.